When it comes to power, farms may use a lot in order to sustain growth. However, solar farms are taking it to the next level. Welcome to this segment of The Philosophical Farmer. We're here today with James Widener. And we're going to be chatting with him today about uh, solar power. James is a grower for Tyson, raises chickens for them. You know, one of the challenges that exist in agriculture is, is the costs. And so one of the, the costs that they can look at trying to offset is, is their utility costs, and, and, and in specifically electricity. Uh, James is getting ready to put up a solar array that's going to feed back into the grid and uh, hopefully significantly offset his costs as he moves forward in this business. Either the university or Farm Bureau One had an article about a, a guy in Ryzen that uh, had put one in and he had an operation very similar to mine. I asked uh, the Ag Engineering Department who to talk to about it, find out more information on that. Well, I called down there and found out and I happened to get the agent that that, that guy worked through. And I called him and visited with him a while and I said, you think it'd be all right if I called him? And he says, oh yeah, I said, I'll give you his number. So I called him and I talked to him about the company we were dealing with and what have you. And he seemed positive on it. And I said, well, is there anything you would have done differently? And he said, yeah, I would have put it in two years earlier. We looked at actually putting it on the chicken houses. We looked at putting it out in front of my dwelling house. We, uh, we looked at all the different sites and we decided to put it here and it's facing the right direction where we can uh, get good southern exposure and, and hopefully make it work. The array that will go in here will be uh, in the neighborhood of 500 panels. They're approximately four foot by eight foot in size. They uh, produce about 400 watts each. And years ago, I took a physical science course and we studied different forms of energy and what have you. And they said, if it ever gets below a dollar uh, a watt for your panels, said, you're, you know, it's gonna be feasible at that point. Of course, you know, a lot of things have changed since then. And I decided to hook up to the grid because uh, it's, it's a lot of weight. So we uh, decided to go, you know, put it here where it's, uh, where it's uh, remote from the farmstead itself and just feed back into the grid and we get a credit one for one uh, at this time, now that will eventually change, but right now it's one for one and it's locked in for 20 years after you, you know, uh, for the exchange rate right now. When the power goes out on the utility, the power is, we're going to be out of power just like we were and we've got to have generators uh, stand by on that sort of deal. These things have a life to produce. I believe it's 80% for up to 30 years. And, but, you know, if they should become obsolete or something, there's not a lot of recycling benefits. There's some aluminum that surrounds them that would be recyc readily recycled. When I went to the annual Farm Bureau meeting this year, uh, I visited with the with the people that are going to put this in and they had a list of people that were interested in it and it was a full page and I don't know whether they had already pulled a page off there or not but uh, when I saw their list there was quite a few people interested in it. They use it a lot in grain drying, grain handling business because that's when their high cost is. My high energy use, electrical energy usage it's when I'm cooling my birds and I have to pump water up there to cool them and, I, and fans to create a breeze down through that house uh, to keep those birds cool. And you don't, you don't produce live birds if you don't keep them cool. <laughs> you know, I worked in sales years ago and I noticed that you would go to a, a business that was dying on the vine and you would find out they were doing the same thing 
the same way. And there's, there's a need for change, for adaptation. You know, when you look at adding a solar array to your agricultural pursuit, it's a way of adapting. It's a way of being innovative and um, changing as the times change. As we look at trying to protect the environment, we try to remain sustainable. We want to pass it on to the next generation. Innovation. Uh, innovation is a way to do that and um, adapting always changing with the times and and that's what we're seeing is as agriculture is taking on things like solar arrays and finding ways that we don't leave the carbon imprint that we have in the past.